Mike, well, you might have heard, and a lot of the viewers may have heard of a big lawsuit that just got settled. Real estate has been in the news more than ever, and it's not just because of multiple offers and how crazy the market is. Right. It's a little bit more serious than that nowadays. Right. So there's a lot of headlines about the recent lawsuit and NAR, National Association of Realtors, settling some of the change that may come through that. So I thought we'd just kind of start things off. First of all, we're both realtors. Uh, so you're going to think that we may be a little biased here. We're going to try not to have any bias and take our realtor hats off, so it's and, off for a second. Uh, yep. and talk a little bit about uh, this lawsuit and how it's going to impact our industry. But I think I'd start out with some of the headlines that we're seeing out there. Right. So right after the settlement. Friday, March 15th. Friday, March 15th. Came out, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, right away, headlines, clickbait headlines all over the place. So CNN said the 6% commission on buying or selling a home is gone after Realtors Association agrees to seismic settlement, mm -hmm. right? A business insider said the end of the realtor monopoly. Mm -hmm. These are some pretty disappointing and, and, and kind of, they, they were they were really cutting, yeah. cutting, skating uh, headlines. Let's just be honest about it out yeah. there. But it started to, as more information's coming out, just like it always does. You know, there needs to be these sensational headlines. But now the most recent one that just came out on Real on Yahoo Finance, real lawsuit settlement unburdens home sellers from heavy commissions. What now for buyers? So they're starting to see the other side of it. Yeah. And and let's be honest, as this gets rolled out, I think people are gonna have different opinions on what affects, you know, what's really gonna be be happening here. Yeah. That's why we're here. So I guess before we talk a little bit about the settlement what it is let's let's hit the background how did we get here mike let's so rewind, you can right yep let's rewind so we were actually just having a discussion about this is what where did this six percent perceived standard commission come from so we're going to take a step back for a second let's go back to the 90s when we were still young pups out there still learning from from our folks who are also in the real estate industry interestingly enough but back in the 90s agency really was seller dominated so there wasn't until 1992 or 93 that there was actually a breakup of representation, essentially, on the seller side and the buyer side. Prior to that, agency was always, you're always representing the seller. So in the 90s, there was a little bit of shakeup in the industry back then, similar to what we're experiencing right now, to offer representation on both sides. So that's how we got here to what they're essentially calling the coupling of the real estate commissions. So now, one of the biggest parts of this is decoupling of the real estate commission. So we're getting back to changing that up essentially trying to bring down option or bring down pricing, create more options for buyers. But that's what got us here today to this uh, this situation. Yeah, and the actual lawsuit um, was filed five years ago, mm -hmm. about five years ago that just got settled. Um, and it was NAR in four of the large brokers uh, as defendants. And they were sued in this class action lawsuit uh, in Illinois and in Missouri, alleging that home sellers are damaged when their listing broker offers to compensate the buyer's representative. Correct. You know, the argument is that the practice led to artificially fixed and inflated uh, commissions being paid to real estate professionals. Mm -hmm. So that's what the lawsuit is about. Um, you have, uh, I think three of the four major brokers called out in that lawsuit have settled. And now the big one, which was what made the biggest news, was the National Association of Realtors settling, and that's what mm -hmm. sent kind of shock waves through uh, throughout the. Uh, Which, for those that you don't know, is NAR is our trade organization. And it's National I mean, we're, we are members of Coldwell Banker. That's our broker who actually had settled back in September, I believe it was September yeah. October as well on this on this suit. Um, so this has been going on for a number of years now. So this isn't anything new. Yeah, but there's really a few main components of this lawsuit that we wanted to break down. Yeah. So let's talk about the current system, how it works. And first of all, commissions are always negotiable. They've always been negotiable. Mm -hmm. um, and there are flat fee brokers out there. There discount are brokers. discount brokers. So keep in mind, you know, commissions have always been negotiable. But traditionally, you know, I would go to list the house. I would charge a, a commission, X percent. Mm -hmm. And then I would have a conversation with that seller and say, okay, how much are we going to offer to that buyer's representative, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so that's what that discussion was. So in essence, the seller was paying the buyer's representative sure. um, at closing, right? So the listing agent would get paid and the uh, buyer's agent would get paid. Correct. All outlined in the settlement statement at closing, that would happen. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. So 
So that's how the current system uh, works today. Right. And so the plaintiff's argument is, is why as a seller am I paying the buyer's broker essentially? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and that, and what's, what's interesting most about that is technically the buyer is paying the purchase price of the home. So the buyer is compensating obviously the real estate agent, but through the seller's proceeds. And that's how it's, there's all kinds of confusion right there, but the buyer is paying the purchase price of the home, which is ultimately part right. of what the agent could pay. Right. So that's why there's a lot of confusion because some sure will say, well, the seller's paying. Some will say, well, the yeah. buyer's paying. And maybe now to note that we are not attorneys. We are real estate agents. I think we <laughs> right. said that. I'll put our hat back on for a second. That's that's what we do. So any of this, as far as guidance, understanding the really intricate details, always go to advisor. Yeah. And that's what it is. So just want to make sure we say that. So when you look at this settlement, there's really five key points. There's a 108-page document that really actually dives deep into everything. Here. We're going to save you all the reading. Yes, Just hit yes. the five points. We'll save Scott as well and put these five points together. But I don't think we've done as much reading in the past few days as we have other than contracts, which is what we're used to reading. So 108 pages that boil down these five key points. So I'm going to have to look down on my paper just to, to bear with me for a second. So the very first is a release of NAR on any liability. And now there's, again, nuances on that. We won't dive into all of that. Number two, compensation is now moved off of the MLS. That means you will no longer see it on the MLS, Zillow, other sites everywhere out there. Number three, written agreements for MLS participants act, acting for buyers will be put into motion as of a mandatory in mid-July. That's when everything's coming into gear. Number four, a settlement payment of $418 million, which is done over four years. Number five, NAR continues to deny any wrongdoing and has long maintained that cooperative compensation and NAR's current policies are good things that benefit both buyers and sellers. So those are the five key points. We'll get into opinions because there's a lot of meat there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it means a lot to our business and to our clients. Yeah, and one of the things, too, to note on those five key points is this settlement has to be approved by the court. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. So it could change, but those are the five key points as we know of them today. Correct, correct. Yes. So, and since um, we are not attorneys, we are literally going off of fact sheets and details that we are are given to make sure that we don't butcher you know, any, any kind of articulation of these subjects. Yeah. Right? So how's this going to affect the housing market? Where are we going forward? It's a big uh, question. You know, from here. And I think number two and number three are going to be the biggest items that are going to shift, shake things up a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, two, compensation being moved off the MLS. And three, written agreements for MLS participants. So if buyer wants a once representation, uh, they're going to have to enter into a buyer agency agreement. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to have to enter into an agreement. Uh, and this is required in a number of states already mm -hmm. uh, and out there, but Ohio not as prevalent. But I'm going to have to enter into an agreement and outline how my buyer's agent is going to be compensated. There's a couple of different ways that that could happen. It could be a flat fee, kind of a fee for service, uh, you know, that, that you could do going forward. Um, it could be in the form of a concession. Right now, you have uh, a piece in our contract that says uh, closing costs. Seller can pay some closing costs on behalf of the buyer. And so that concession could then go to um, my buyer's representative. So a, a percentage. Mm -hmm. uh, or uh, what we do today, the listing agent could offer up a piece of their commission uh, yeah. to go to the buyer. It right. just wouldn't be public when before you go through that. It that just would not be public. Yes. That's the big thing on point number two. It just would not be public. And by the way, the whole reason for that is so certain agents, I guess, unfortunately, and, and I guess this was happening out there, is they were steering towards commission, or at least that's what this was. That's what the lawsuit that's what was they, perceiving. I, I, I struggle to believe that because I know how we handle our, our business and I know how our agents that work with us do it every day. However, that's what was uh, unfortunately an allegation in this in this issue. Yeah. So, um, so those are three things. Um, I think what could end up happening, we may see some buyers go unrepresented That's as well. Mm -hmm. You know, they may not have the money, mm -hmm. uh, to pay for a, uh, buyer's representative. Mm -hmm. And so they may go at it alone. And to me, that's just probably not good for the consumer, especially those who need it the most. So moving forward, um, there will still be buyer representation. It doesn't mean that this is taking buyer representation no, away. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that they're 
taking compensation away on the buyer's side either, right? Those are still going to be part of it. There's going to be a much more clarity on how everyone's getting paid. Absolutely. And who's paying what. Yes. And right. it'll be directly tied most likely to your value, what you provide. X, absolutely. Which and, is another goal, I think, of all of this. Yeah. Indirectly. You know? Indirectly. Yeah. So now that we've kind of hit the facts of the whole thing, let's weigh in on our pros and cons sure. of this and outline it that way. I think that's good because I think that's what we've been having most of the discussions on. And it's easy for us as real estate agents to see those headlines and think, oh, it's all cons, it's all negative and that sort of thing. But you know what? There's, the fact of the matter, there's some great things that are going to come out of this. And I think there's going to be some, some, some details now that are going to help the buyer and that are going to help the seller. There are some concerns as well. Yes. Let's jump in real quick. Right. To why, don't you, why don't you take, I'll take the pros. Take the pros. Yeah. I'll take the cons. All right. So I'm going to take the pros. Let's get, let's get started here because so the very first one is more clarity and more transparency, which you know what? Everything in life deserves more clarity and transparency. You know, I think my wife would say that when we communicate it on a day-to-day basis. <laughs> uh, I think our agents could, you know, we could all do better just articulating our value, making sure that the client understands that. So that's number one. Number two would really be improved buyer experience. So when it comes to that consultation, we talk so heavily about how important that consultation is and adding in the agreement to where they understand how they're being compensated or how they're compensating their agent. That's really, really pivotal. And that's key. Um, and I know we have those internally, we have those conversations, but I think having that as a standard across the industry will really help out. The right. Industry. I mean, we've been big on buyer consults. You don't just pop someone in a, in a car, start showing, you really want to get to know them, articulate your value, how you're going to help them be prepared. and be prepared. But we do that a lot on the listing side, but as an industry, we're not great at doing that on the that's buyer true. side. And so I think through this, that will, no, that's definitely perfect. without a doubt. Uh, the third is the consumer is going to have options. They're going to be able to share, look at different brokerages who offer different value propositions. They offer different products. That will really be a benefit to clients going forward. They get to pick and choose what they need. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then of course, lastly is, this is probably most important is steering away from commission. An agent should never steer towards commission. It should always be steering to well, steering. Let's get rid of that word. It should always doing what's in the best interest of the client. And I think that's what's the goal of this. I think it's what's really going to happen here, which is so important. Yeah. So we're excited about this. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the cons because there, there are, well. there, are yes. there are some cons to this as well. And I think the first thing is that first time home buyer who is already priced out of the market, right? And if um, compensation isn't offered up by the seller and they have to pay out of pocket their representation, they may decide I can't go and and have representation. And these are folks who probably never bought a house before. And they're the ones that need representation the most. Um, So that's a huge negative in a market that people already feel like they're priced out on. I think another confusion is just timing, right? Mm -hmm. And so what ends up happening is we don't have the court approval on this yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, We don't fully understand and the public doesn't fully understand, right? And so whenever there's confusion out there, confusion often creates indecision and pause um you just create issues yeah as we're going forward yeah yeah so that's another con in there i think there's also confusion about what the settlement really is and there will always be some confusion with change whenever there's change Mm -hmm. there's a lot of confusion in the market and so a lot of this is going to take some time to get sorted out so even though the timelines are july you know, it could be 12 months. It could be even longer before some of this shakes out. And what is the new norm? Correct. You know, and yeah. July is not, not far away. It is. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. So we'll see how quickly these, these changes can be really, really rolled out and we can get clarity of the changes. Yeah. You know, I think another con Mike is you can't roll the commission into your financing, mm-hmm. you know, for representation, the way this is written today. Mm-hmm. And what, when you think about traditionally, mm-hmm. You know, even though the seller pays for the commission, we argue a lot of times the buyer really is traditionally. Because it's all baked in there. Because it's all baked in there. It's what appraisals are off of. So they're basically that commission's in there and they're basically financing over 30 years. Mm -hmm. This, they're not able to do that, right? And um, so, but I do believe that eventually we will see some changes in the mortgage industry and maybe they will allow yes, this. So if I have, if I'm, you know, need to roll in my, um, buyer fees, uh, 
you know, roll it into the mortgage, then maybe that will be. But as it stands today, you cannot do that. We're hoping that's going to lessen the blow on some of these under maybe maybe underserved folks that will be really hammered by this because yeah. no VA is the next one. Well, that's yeah, that's the next one. And the VA has not addressed whether it will change its requirement prohibiting VA buyers from paying a commission. So as of right now, above and beyond you know, a commission outside of the purchase price. Correct. correct. Yeah. So when you think about our soldiers, you know, our folks and mm-hmm. VA who have um, fought so hard for that benefit and it kind of feels like it's getting ripped away from them mm-hmm. when this goes into effect. So I think we'll see some changes. I surely would hope so mm-hmm. um, in that aspect as well. On this settlement, to be, to be frank, we were having this conversation before anyways, as far probably, as kind of compensation. Probably a year. Yeah. yeah. We, we yeah. started talking about this, you know, a year ago. I still mm-hmm. think that there will always be some sort of compensation. I think that there will be a lot of sellers who will still offer up kind of some sort of compensation, which I really do. When you think about a lot of the comps that were used today, all had that baked in there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, but We'll see what happens. We'll keep everyone informed. Uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, um, if there's realtors or other realtors watching this, mm-hmm. you know, it is it is most important to show your value on the buy side, obviously, and the list side. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the list side, we've always like had that listing appointment. Mm-hmm. We always sat in that listing presentation. You know, on the buy side, you really got to articulate your value, step up your game. You're going to be fine. Um, but if you're just average, if you're just a door opener and you're not adding more value, mm-hmm. you're not going to survive. Yeah. And quite frankly, the, the barriers to entry are why we're in an issue here, right? There's, yeah. there's, there's agents of all different spectrums. We know some of the best people out there, best professionals, and they're all going to be, they are all going to do well and do really well in this market. Well, and as you, as a client of ours, or as a client of somebody else's, as you're looking at it, look back on your experience and understand that. I think that's what's most important is this all about the value you provide. I think that's what's most important. And when it comes down to this, yes, there's some, some big changes. But you know what? Ultimately, all that matters is that the value matches the compensation. And I think that's what's offered here is some op- some options. Are really, you know, there's some worries. We need to make sure that they figure some stuff out. It's by July. Yeah. A lot that's going to happen. So as you're out there, as you're thinking through things, call Scott, call myself, call anybody on the, the Euler Heinz team. Call your agent. Um, and and we're, I'm sure they'll give you some great insight because it's also specific, just like selling your house. Yep. Mm-hmm. And make sure if you want more videos about the market mm-hmm. or a follow up to this, make sure you uh, click the like and subscribe button and we'll keep you posted. And be friendly on any messages or comments down below as well. We know it can get a little crazy out there with all this going on. <laughs>